Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about momentum. Um, this is the beginnings of chapter 8 and here goes. Momentum is defined as the mass of an object multiplied by its velocity. Um, momentum is m times v where lowercase p is the common symbol for momentum measured in kilogram meters per second, mass in kilograms, and our old friend velocity in meters per second. Now, most textbooks are going to use lowercase p for momentum. When I do problems, often I am going to write out the word mom for momentum. And the reason is, personally, I think it's very confusing. p for momentum, big P for pressure, uh, Greek letter rho, which looks like a p for density. And I always want to make sure we have clear communication between you and I. Now, a lot of people have a gut instinct about momentum. Momentum is inertia, but it's inertia in motion because we get to take into account the velocity of an object. Inertia is just a measure of something's mass, how hard it is to accelerate it or change its motion. But you and I also know that if you have an object that's moving quickly, it is going to have a lot more momentum than an object that is poking along. So it is the place in physics where we get to combine these ideas of mass and velocity. Momentum is really interesting. There are, are objects that have huge amounts of momentum. Um, for example, a super tanker. And we're talking something that can hold billions of gallons of gasoline. Um, and it will, okay, maybe billions was too much. Millions of, of yeah, gallons of gasoline. And it can weigh 500,000 tons or over a billion pounds. So we're talking something that's huge. This picture, each one of these small little tugboats, and there are many of them, are designed to pull this big beast around. One of the fascinating things that I, I read many, many years ago was that a super tanker will turn off its engines about 15 miles from the harbor and then coast the last 15 miles. Yes, there's an awful lot of drag when you're trying to travel through water, but this is so much mass and so much velocity. Top speed, these things are only going about 19 miles an hour. But you get so much momentum that it is very difficult to change that momentum. And that's one of the reasons tugboats were invented. You get these big things in the harbor, and it's easier to have little engines kind of push them around. Um, actually, they're big engines on little boats, and these can maneuver them slowly and gently into port without trying to stop something this big on a dime. Another classic example of momentum, this is an old story from the Civil War, that Civil War soldiers would be far behind the firing line, and a cannon ball is shot, and the ball, when it's shot, then hits the ground and rolls. And it's sort of like you and me stepping on a soccer ball when it's rolling past you on the ground. Well, soldiers would reach out their foot to try and stop the ball, and they would end up with a broken leg because the cannonball might only weigh 10 pounds, but it has so much momentum that it could still do damage to them. Now, momentum is a vector. You have to take direction into account when we start solving problems. Um, for example, in this situation, when I have a big truck and a little car, if they happen to have a head-on collision, which direction is the momentum vector going to be larger? Well, it depends upon both the mass and the velocity. The car has a little bit of mass, but if you have a little car with a big velocity and you have a big truck with a tiny velocity, you can actually have more momentum, momentum in this direction than in the direction of the truck. So it's a combination of both. Momentum units do not have a unique name. We are used to newtons being kilogram meters per second squared. Uh, a joule is a kilogram meters squared per second squared. And momentum units, that's it. And this is a first indicator of the fact that momentum is not one of those big laws of science. It is a principle. And what does that mean? It means that it is useful in only very specific situations, not universally. So when can we use momentum? It's very, very useful when you're talking about collisions, one object hitting another, some sort of an action-reaction pair. You've got a cannon that has an original velocity of zero, and then you have a mass that goes that way and a mass that recoils that way. And it's also useful when we start describing explosions. Explosions where you have no momentum to begin with, 
and then all of the pieces, if you could do the math for all the crazy pieces, they would have their mass plus times their velocities would equal zero. Now, right after this video, I'm going to ask you to watch a quick little couple minute um, news clip about a Mythbusters accident that happened back in December of 2011. Uh, they were doing a some experiments for their show on this Alameda bomb test range. A cannonball got out of control and it went about 700 yards. It went through a home. This is an actual picture of where the cannonball went through this house and then went continued. It had so much momentum. It can, continued to go through multiple walls, um, through sheets, through sheetrock, bounced across the highway and actually ended up in this guy's car after breaking his car window. Now that ball was only about 12 pounds of iron, but calculated and a bunch of nerds online have done the calculations it probably was going over 500 miles an hour when it actually left the bomb test range so it's a really weird example of momentum but the good news is nobody was hurt in this situation all right i'm going to ask you to watch that and then we're going to come back and we'll continue 